video this week. We are celebrating the new Beetlejuice movie and I am just nerding out. So I decided I wanted to do a Beetlejuice inspired nail set, of course. We're gonna get right into it. I'm using my V Beauty Pure Feeling Beautiful collection. I'll put everything on the screen just in case I get anything wrong because I usually do. Um, but what I'm going to do is start off with this gorgeous Beetlejuice green. I know it's brat summer. People are calling lime green brat green. I call it Beetlejuice green. Okay, it's just because. And I'm going to layer a few things on this nail. So we're starting off with the shrunken head character. I had to do it only because of the amount of texture it seems to require. So yeah, that is what I'm doing for this nail. So I layered that lime green and then I added a cat eye, which is also green. That cat eye is actually from Timu. Anything that I use in this video and that I can link, I will make sure to include in the description. I'm using yet another Timu supply. <laughs> I'm using these clays. They seem to they seem to be pretty comparable to even like higher end clays. I can't really say for sure because obviously I haven't tested the higher end clays, but these work perfectly well. They cure normally like you would expect. I did want to start off by adding different tonal values to the face. So I used a bunch of random gel polishes that I had in my collection. I have this collection from Model Ones and it literally has quite a few different shades of brown. And those gels I'm going to be using to add again that like value, that shadow to the face. So as you saw, I did use my dotting tool to carve out like the general shape of the shrunken head. And I'm not going to lie to you. I don't necessarily love this version of the guy. Spoiler alert. I will be doing that again. I will be doing this nail and another one shortly. Uh, but it's basically the exact same process. Um, just done it a little differently in terms of like the size of the head and the shape as well. I wasn't entirely happy with how it was coming out. I felt like the eyeballs as well were looking a little too small because I do feel like he has bigger eyes than what I just did on him. Um, so as I said, I do end up changing him a little bit and just, just switching up a couple things. Um, but using the very same products and I felt like I didn't I didn't want to like refilm the entire thing. It would have taken me forever. Just extra steps that I would have had to take to complete this set. And then I would have been late again. And I don't want to be late because I'm posting once a week. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I basically stuck with using these primarily. Yeah, I added like that weird sewing looking effect on the lips or on the mouth. I actually didn't end up doing it on the sec or the third. This is actually my second. My third uh, one that I will be showing you a little later. 
I didn't end up doing the um, the mouth thing, but I'm. I think I can live with it. I'm totally fine with it not because it just it looks kind of weird. Anywho, I did add a cute little Ariana Grande ponytail to my, to my dude. That also changes a little bit in my very last rendition of this character. So I'm adding his shirt now. He does have kind of like a, a dress shirt on him. So that is what I'm trying to do. It's kind of brown, like light brown, almost like tan. And so I mix a couple of the shades that I added to my palette. I mixed a few of those up and then basically just came up with this brown. And I was actually not so upset by how the shirt came out on this one but it comes out better again same exact process just done a little bit differently So guess who's using the paint gels that I was talking stuff about last video. I'm actually really appreciating these potted paint gels. I believe I got them from either AliExpress or Shein, one of the two, and they work really well. I am still hoping to maybe one day purchase a nicer set. But in the meantime, dude, these will work in a pinch. Like, it's so much better than just using your regular black gel polish. As black as it may be, it just isn't the same. Potted gels are a lot more, I want to say they're just a lot more opaque and thicker. Therefore, they're amazing for line work and whenever it is that you want to outline even the thinnest most fine line you could definitely do it as long as your brush allows you to do it um, i'm still using my little brush set that i got from beetles and it's awesome um, i'm very happy with it because it does provide different brushes that i find are super helpful when drawing characters this tiny but anywho we're on the Beetlejuice now, and friend, I am not going to lie, I hated this version so much, and typically I know that people tend to at least sketch their art whenever it is that they're going to add it on a nail or something. It just, it's good practice, but I sometimes just don't want to take that long <laughs> in preparation. 
Um, and this is what happens. I'm starting over because I don't like where this is going. I made two of the shrunken head guy and I think I kind of like the first one better. I'll, sh I'll show it to you in a second. I kind of like that better and then I'm thinking maybe I could do it again and do it just a little bit better. But Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice I definitely have to do again because unfortunately he's starting to look a little more like Joey Fatone and a lot less like Michael Keaton. You know, so here we have these are the two shrunken heads. I ended up liking this guy a little bit more, although I do like the background of this one, but it looks gross. That's definitely the point. I definitely want it to look gross and like wrinkly. I feel like I want to make the head even smaller, but then the thing about that is that. I won't be able to put as much detail, I don't think. Also, is that a challenge that I'm accepting? Yeah, then we have Joey Fatone dressed as Beetlejuice. Mm, that was a little difficult to do. I'm actually thinking of uh, using a different image. This three-quarter profile, it just doesn't look like Michael Keaton, you know? And of course, it's even harder to do it on a curved surface. Obviously, when you're drawing it on paper or painting it on canvas, you get to see the whole thing. But if you're, if I'm working on this side of the portrait, then I'm not seeing this side. I'm definitely going to try this again. I think I'm going to start with this one, actually. Alrighty, so Joey Fatone just wasn't going to cut it with peace and love, you know? So I started over again and I actually did this a little bit different than I did the last time. I know that I added the background before I added the foreground and it just, that too was a little confusing. So I basically did the opposite thing and I just added that really pale vanilla looking shade and made the Beetlejuice face and neck and yeah I'm also I'm making the saturation a little more jelly like on this purple shade from the feeling beautiful collection and I think it works a lot better and yeah I'm very happy also just to reiterate I'm pretty sure I already put it somewhere on the screen but I am draw drawing I am painting on a matte surface i cannot stress enough to you how much easier it is to paint on a matte surface as opposed to a shiny top coat absolute must in my opinion but i'm slowly adding these different elements to beetlejuice as you can see i already added the eyes the mouth um and I have no regrets on starting over because it, it had to be done.
Also, I'm so sorry about this whole thing. I'm so sorry about this whole shot. I it just, he looks like, what is his name? From the Star Wars, the, the villain, one of the villains looks just like him. Senator Palpatine. Does he not look like that? I would, you know what though? I'm not even going to get that like picky about my own work because I would rather have Palpatine than in sync, you know? This time around, I also added a little more shading. I kind of wish I would have gone a little more detailed, um, but following the same process with adding face gel and just like a dot of the gel polish, whatever gel polish that I'm trying to make lighter or more transparent. Um, I was able to add my shadows whenever you're painting. Obviously, you want to add as much like value and just different tones so that you can see all of the beautiful details and complexities of the portrait that you're painting. Um, if that is what you want to do, that is what I wanted to do. So anyway, you can see here how much better it is sometimes to actually practice. It's fine though. Somehow I was able to do it over and I'm happy that I did. If you have the time to practice, obviously yes, practice. Um, but sometimes you just have to do, work with what you got, you know, and with the time that you have. So, but anyway, here I'm basically just going to go back and forth between the nails and adding just different little details. So for this guy, I wanted the background to be nice and glossy and I wanted the actual character to be matte. So that is what I did. And now for the Beetlejuice title nail. I am not the most excited when it comes to font. You know, I'm just not a font girly, mainly because I, I just feel like it's so tedious. It is so tedious. Oh my goodness. And if your spacing is incorrect, then it just, it's hard, you know, it's hard to tell how much space each letter is going to take. And then I had to start over here as well. It was just a bit much, but you know what? Totally worth it because it came out pretty good. It came out okay. I'm not going to like sit here and like toot my own horn. I didn't practice this Beetlejuice font situation and I'm still very happy with it. So yeah. Then it's the Lydia Dietz nail. I just love Winona Ryder so much. Um, as you just saw, it is from that one clip from the movie. So I started off with an outline. I feel like I was a lot more confident by this point. And the only thing that I feel like would have made it just a little bit better was if I had added more of a different background. Lydia but then at the same time I just didn't want to take away from I don't know just from the character itself so I just left it blank and here I'm just adding different details I did do two coats of both the black and the nude that I used to do her face yeah also I love the bangs Ugh, I kind of want bangs like that myself Low-key, I always try to get them that way, but they never really look that way because my hair is super thick and just will not look that cute, you know, like nice and feathered out. Maybe I just need to do a little more, like, thing with the blade. Anyway.
I wanted to add that glow in the dark effect. So I bought a glow in the dark top coat. It's not the best. I didn't really take too much time researching what would be the best glow in the dark gel polish, but it's not as vibrant as I wish it was, but it does, it gets the job done. You know what I mean? And I didn't have to spend too much because like, let's be real, how many glow in the dark effects am I going to need in my life? Probably not very many. Uh, definitely not past this spooky season. So I just bought something that was a little more affordable and that was what was available. Cockroach nail. Hi, how are you? Of course, I had to include the cockroach. You know, it just like is—is is it really Beetlejuice if there aren't any disgusting things around? You know, I sculpted her out. I—it's probably a he, right? It sounded very masculine. This actually gives me really good ideas for doing a set that's like more beetle centered man these clays are so much fun i had such a blast adding all the detail to this nasty little cockroach yeah man what can i say i also added the glow in the dark effect to the background but not to the entire background just what was immediately close to the cockroach so as to make it look like it's kind of glowing from its underside You'll see the effect later on. That looks so disgusting. Oh my gosh. That looks so gross. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, but cockroaches to me are like one of the worst things that I could possibly encounter. Little wild critter wise, you know, I just, oh, I can't even look at it too much because it's really disgusting, but it completed the set, you know, and it just like, it went so well with it that I, I had to do it in spite of my own repulsed nature, you know, like I'm just. gonna be it from me that is the set thank you so much for hanging out with me check out how they look glow in the dark that's so cool look at it so sick yeah who else is gonna join me at the theater september 6th you're welcome for giving you this much marketing <laughs> beetlejuice yeah i'm so excited i'm looking forward to watching the movie it's one of those cult classics for me I remember watching the movie when I was very, very little. And I even remember the cartoon. They used to air the cartoon immediately after school. I remember watching the Beetlejuice cartoon every day after school. So, like, nostalgia, man. Um, anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will do my best to think of a few more... Halloween 
inspired set. And I will hopefully see you guys next time. Bye.